Today I'm gonna to show you how to set up the brand new Amazon Fire TV stick. We're gonna go through the full setup process, how you are able to use the fancy remote, how you can use your phone as a remote, download all your favorite applications, and even use your Echo to control your Fire TV stick. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So this is the new 2020 version of the Fire TV Stick. Now there are two different models, I'll get to that in a second, but a Fire TV Stick allows you to add smart TV functionality to pretty much any TV. So as long as you have an HDMI port that looks like this, on your TV, you will be able to use this and add this functionality to your TV. You maybe already have an older version of this, so this is just a newer version. Now up here at the top, we can see a bunch of different applications. These are probably the apps that you most likely are using, and there are a ton of other applications that you can use as well. So here it does come with a remote, and this version has volume controls and a power control up there. So if your TV supports it, you'll be able to turn on and off your TV and adjust the volume all from this remote. And then this is what gives your TV this smart functionality. You plug this into the HDMI port. Now looking on the side here, it talks a little bit more about some of the specifications. So here you do have press and ask the Amazon Assistant for different things. Here you can also have power and volume controls. Here you have Dolby Atmos. This is a 1080p model, and this has a quad-core processor. Amazon says it's 50% faster than the previous model, and this will work with Wi-Fi 802.11ac. Now, I do wanna mention the difference between the Fire TV Stick and the Fire TV Stick Lite. So the Lite version doesn't have the volume buttons on the remote. That's one of the differences. And the other difference is over here on the side, it has a pass-through Dolby Atmos and not just the main Dolby Atmos. So I don't really know the difference between that, but this is just gonna have a better quality audio versus the Fire TV Stick Lite. And then here on the back, it just talks about how great performance, picture and Dolby Audio, tens of thousands of channels, apps and skills. Um, you can use the Amazon Assistant, so you'll notice that I don't say uh, this word in my videos. I'll say Amazon Voice Assistant or Amazon Assistant, um, so you can talk to the assistant right through the remote and you can do more with your TV. Now, um, I do recommend getting a Fire TV device if you already have different Amazon devices. So if you already have Echo devices in your home, or if you're already a Prime subscriber, or you're using Amazon Music, those are all great reasons to pick up a Fire TV stick. And if you don't have any of those, you can still use this no problem. So let's go ahead and look and see what is inside the box. So over here on the side. So there we have our remote. Here we have the Fire TV stick. Here we have an HDMI extender cable. This is nice if you can't get the Fire Stick right in the back of your TV, you will be able to angle it with this. Here you have the instructions and here's how to get the one year of Food Network Kitchen for free. And then here you have a micro USB cable and the very last thing in here is a power brick as well as two AAA batteries that you will use for the remote. So let's go ahead and put those in. So on the remote, here we have the power button, our voice assistant, here you have left, right, up, down, and then you can press the select button, you have back, home, and menu, rewind, pause, play, and forward, volume up and down, and then mute. And then here we have our Fire TV stick. So here is where you will plug in the power. So you're gonna plug the end of this cable into there. So let's go ahead and get this plugged into the TV and I'll show you how to set it up. So now we're just going to plug in the Fire TV stick into an open HDMI. 
and then we're going to plug in the micro USB into it. And now when you plug it into the wall, I recommend plugging it directly into the wall and not the USB into the TV. Now I'm going to power on the TV with my TV remote. So once my TV's on, I'm then going to navigate to that input I put it in. So I'm gonna to go to my input or source button, and then I'm gonna come over here to the unknown HDMI one, and I'm going to tap on that. And now here it is showing me my Fire TV. So if you don't ever see your Fire TV stick show up, you need to make sure that you change to the correct input. And now we're gonna use the Fire TV stick remote to navigate through. And here it says press the plus pause to start. So here I'm just going to navigate through, choose my language. Then it's going to scan and find a Wi-Fi network. So this is the network I want to add it to. Then I'm going to type that in. And if you press the menu, that will jump back and forth between capital and lowercase. So that really helps it make it so it's easier to type it in. And then if you mess up, you can press the rewind to go back and you can push the fast forward to go forward. And then once I have my password in, I can push the play button and then it will connect. Next, it's going to check for any updates. If there is one, it's going to install it. And once that's finished, we'll carry on. The update is now complete. Now the next menu, it's asking for me to sign into my Amazon account. So you can select, I already have an account or add a new account. So I already have an Amazon account and here it's going to have you use your computer or your phone to sign in with the code on screen. All right, so I just finished signing in on my phone. It said registration is complete and there it logged me right in. Now when I purchased, I asked it to register the Fire TV stick to my account. So here it's asking if I wanna keep it on my account or if I wanted to change the account. So I'm gonna say keep on my account. And now it's asking if you wanna save your Wi-Fi password to your Amazon account so the next Amazon product you set up, it will automatically sign you into your Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna select yes. Next, it's going to ask about parental control. So before you buy something, you may want to have a pin code on there so that your kids aren't purchasing all kinds of movies. So I am going to enable parental controls. And then here you're gonna type in the pin that you want to use. So this pin is going to help protect purchases, protect app launches, so you can restrict certain applications and enable viewing restrictions on certain content for teen and above on Prime Video. So I like that, I have kids that will be using this, so it's nice that it is protecting that content. Next, it's going to make sure our audio system is set up, so we're going to tap next, and it's going to play, so make sure that the volume is up. So with your Fire TV remote pointed at your TV, toggle the volume up and down. So I'm just gonna point it right here and press volume up and down. And there you can see it is controlling my TV or whatever my TV is set to control, which is my sound system. So that works great. And then I'm going to select yes, that changed the volume. And now my TV remote is set up. Next, we're going to choose the streaming service apps that we want to have on our Fire TV. So let's select get started. And here we're going to tap on the ones we want to download. So we watch Disney Plus, Hulu. We don't watch any of those other ones. We're gonna move next. We don't really watch any of these TV shows. Maybe I'll add NBC. Next we have some sports applications that we could download. And here we have a few more apps. I'm not using any of those services, so I'm just going to press play to continue. And then it's going to download those applications in the background. And now we are at our Fire TV Stick interface. So you can see automatically it is pulling up all kinds of content. So this is something we were previously watching on Prime Video, so that popped up. Here are other movies that I own that are in my Amazon Prime Video library that are showing up. And then down here it's showing other apps and channels. Now I do wanna mention that this menu is going to change. I was hoping that it was already changed, but as of right now, it's the old menu that was on previous Fire TVs, so nothing currently is different. Um, but once that updates, I'll do another video about the update on that. So here you can browse around and you can just find things to watch. If I wanna go into an application, I can easily navigate to it press the button, go into the app, and if you need to sign in, you will need to do that. Or here it's saying, hey, you actually need to download this before you can open that up. So let's download that. Um, 
and see here's another one I want to have YouTube TV on here so we're gonna go and download that and so anytime you want to go back to the home screen you just push the home button it's going to take you right back to the home you could also push back button now I don't want to spend a ton of time on the home screen here as it will be updated but here are some tips on how to personalize it so let's say you see an application down here and you want to move it out of the way or you want to see it more present. So when you go to the app, if you push menu, then it gives you the option down here to move it, uh, more info or uninstall. So let's say I move, so then it opens up this menu where I can then move Netflix back a little bit further. So here it's showing all the applications that I've installed on my account. So if I wanna re-download some of these, I can then just click on it here and go through the download process. And so that's a little tip on how you can organize the apps row. There's not much more organization with everything else. Here you're gonna see a sponsored row, here you're gonna just see some originals, and there's nothing that you can really do with that. If you do see a movie and you push menu, you have the option over here to add it to your watch now with Prime, watch trailer, add to watch list, or remove it from your list. So that's really nice if you see something you like, but you don't wanna watch it right away, you can add it to your watch list to watch it later. So this menu is kind of just curating different things that you have on the Fire TV to help you find things to watch or apps that you like to use. So as you go down, you'll just see different recommendations uh, that Amazon has for you. But at the top, if you go all the way to the top, here you can see this row. So we have our home, we have live. So here's it's showing different live TV options your videos, so things that I actually own in my library or things that I've watched. Here we have different free videos we can watch because of Amazon Prime Video. And then here we have movies, so different movies that we could buy or rent. Here we have TV shows. And then here we have applications. So if you want to find a specific app, you would come in here and go through and then you could download those applications. So then here I can find different apps that I may want to use. Let's click on Netflix and I need to download Netflix. So let's go ahead and download that now. And it's queued, so it's going to download in the background. And it usually will show you a pop-up when that download is finished. So there at the bottom, it says press menu to launch Netflix now, or here we can just select open. All right, now this app does require my pin code. So if I want to adjust that, I can go into the menu to turn off the parental controls. All right, so now we are in Netflix, but I need to sign into my account. So if I press sign in, here it's gonna pop up with this menu. And if you do have a lot to type in, sometimes it's kind of hard to type everything in with this little remote. So let me show you a cool trick you can do on another device to quickly enter this info. Um, you just need to go and download the Fire TV application. All right, so here I have the Fire TV application downloaded. I'm going to open that up. Here it's saying, do you want to know about announcements? Sure, and now it's going to find a device on your network to control. So here we have Brett's Fire TV Stick. So we're going to tap on that, and then it's going to pop open a number on the TV that we need to type in. Type that in. Now it's linked my app with the TV. Here you have an option to enable the buttons to push or you can just use the touchpad and swipe up and down. So let's do, uh, let's do that later. So now on screen, we have these different options where we can swipe, we can go up and down. So you can see over there on the screen that I can navigate through by touching and swiping. Now is what I want to do is I wanna press the keyboard up here and the keyboard then allows me to just type in what I want to write down. So instead of having to go through and type out every letter of your email address, you can just pull up the application and quickly type that in. Just like that. And then we can go back and we can then navigate down to next. And now we can do the same thing on our password without having to go through this menu with the remote, changing capital and go to special characters and all that, we can just do it right here. Passwords may not work the best. <laughs> I keep accidentally selecting yes, and then I'm not finished typing in my password, so maybe this isn't the best option for passwords. All right, so now I'm in. I can continue using my phone to act as the remote, so I can then swipe through and go find what I want to use. I also have the options on here to press play. 
So if we want to watch something, I can then just push the play button. It will then play. I have the home button here. I have back and a lot of cool stuff right in this remote if you don't happen to have your usual remote. So not only do you have the option to navigate by going left and right, if you pull down right here, you can talk to the Amazon voice assistant. So you hold down, what's the weather like tomorrow? So there you can see it is able to interact with the Fire TV stick. Here we have an option to adjust the app that we are currently using. So if I push that, let's say I wanna go into Disney Plus, I can tap on Disney Plus, and then it will take me right there. So that's really cool that you can quickly jump to those different applications without having to navigate through the main menu to even find it. You are able to do that right there. Now, if we close this and go into the settings, you do have an option to change the Fire TV remote to add the directional pad. So what that does, is it gives me this pad to navigate. So then I can go left, right, up, down, and select. So I kind of like the swiping option a little bit better, but that is how you can use the Fire TV remote. So now let's go ahead and go over here under the settings and show you a few things that you can do. So next we're going to go under display and sounds. And if you have the parental controls on here, it makes it so the kids can't come in and adjust any of the settings. So under here, we have the option to personalize our screensaver. So we can come in here and uh, right now it's just showing an Amazon collection screensaver, but you can actually use the Amazon photos application to upload your own photos and create an album and so I can come in here and then I could choose um, some of their other ones. So here I could choose your photos where it's just going to choose all of the photos that I have on my Amazon photos library, or I can come down here and it's going to show different albums that I created. So here I created one called 2020 Adventure, or it's going to show different locations that I have photos taken in. So let's go ahead and choose 2020 Adventures. And then down here, I can choose the different styles. So in the background, you can see what it's like. So pan and zoom, here I have the dissolve option, or I could also choose the mosaic where it's going to put a bunch of pictures on the screen at once. Pan and zoom is kind of fun, so we'll leave it on that. You can change the slide speed, how long it takes to start when you're not using the Fire TV. Um, you can add smart captions, hints, and you could turn off shuffle. Let's go ahead and turn that on. So that's the screensaver. Next you have display. So this is a 1080p Fire Stick. Um, the Fire Stick 4K is two years old. Um, but that might be a better option if you want the 4K version and you can go down to 720p if your TV only supports 720p. And you have this option for matching frame rate. So this is kind of nice where it will automatically adjust depending on what frame rate the video is um, with your TV. Um, I've had that turned on before and it seemed to work just great. So um, the other option is to double check your audio. So you can turn off navigation sounds. If you don't want it to beep every time you press something, you can turn that off. Here you can choose surround sound. So if something's not working right, you can adjust uh, the surround sound options here. And then here is a really cool option. This is enable display mirroring. So what this does is it allows you to mirror certain devices to your TV. So with this, you can actually mirror your phone right to your Fire TV. So here on my Samsung phone, I'm just going to go into the notification panel here and I have an option called Smart View. So I'm gonna tap on Smart View and it's showing me a bunch of options I have because I have other Chromecasts and different things in my home. But right here you see Brett's Fire TV stick. So I can tap on that select start now, and now it's going to mirror my screen. So whatever I'm doing on my phone, it's going to mirror that to the TV. And now this is really nice if you wanna mirror something, maybe the videos or whatever you're doing on your phone so that others can see, you are able to do that. So you can see it does lag a little bit, so you're not gonna play games or anything um, with this, but it's nice that you do have that option. So let's say I want to show you some pictures that I have on my phone. I can go in here, open the pictures, if I rotate my device. So there you can see everything I'm doing on my phone. It shows up over there on the TV. So that's just nice. If you wanna show off some things to the rest of your family, you're able to do that really quickly uh, with the mirroring option on the Fire TV stick. Now to exit, I'm just going to select back. Now it asks if I want to exit display mirroring and then I'm done. 
and here you can turn on and off HDMI CEC. So if your remote is not adjusting your TV with the volume, you may need to come in here and turn that on. You might also want to check the settings of your actual TV settings to see if there's an option to turn on HDMI CEC. Once you turn that on, then you should be able to control it with the remote. So those are the display and sound settings. I think that's pretty important to know. And then if you do need to adjust any of the other settings, you can come in here and you have all those options here. If you did want to turn off those parental controls, you would come in here under preferences and here at the top you have parental controls. And so here allows you to adjust what it's going to protect. So maybe I don't want it to protect opening applications. I can turn that off. Here, if I wanna protect my photos, I can keep that and you can change your pin right there. And so that's pretty much the main things that you would want to know about in the settings here. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the ability to use a voice assistant. So here under the Alexa option, so if we come in here, it then gives us some different suggestions or things that we can try with our voice assistant on the TV. So let's go ahead and try it out. So to use this, I'm just going to hold down the microphone button and then ask my question. Open Netflix. And there it opened the application right away. Now this will allow you to use whatever things that you have linked to your Amazon assistant. So if I wanna find the weather or if I wanna check my calendar, it's able to do that as well. Play Iron Man. Search for How to Train Your Dragon 3. All right, so here I'm in Netflix and it searched for How to Train Your Dragon, but it couldn't find the movie. Let's go back to the home page and try that again. How to Train Your Dragon 3. All right, so here it pulled up um, the actual movie that I do want to watch. So I can select that movie and it's opening up Amazon Video and it's asking if I want to watch the trailer, watch it now because I purchased it, or you can see more ways to watch. So I could watch with Amazon or I could actually watch it in the Hulu application. So let's go ahead and watch this movie for a little bit. So we're gonna select watch now. Okay, now that we're watching the video, I can easily pause and play right from the remote. If I press the menu, it's going to pull up a few things over here on the side. We can watch from the beginning, turn on subtitles, we have audio options. And then down here, you also have the view all x-ray. So if I push up, x-ray allows you to see what actors are currently on screen. Um, it's gonna tell you more about the cast and characters and trivia. So that's one of the cool things about using an Amazon device or Prime Video is it allows you to see all of that information without having to go to IMDb. It's all built right in here and you have trivia all, all in one. So that's really, really cool. And then for the other buttons, if I wanna fast forward, I just push the fast forward button. It's gonna fast forward 10 seconds. If I hold it down, it's then going to start scanning through and then I could use the remote to fast forward a little bit more, go to the part that I want and then I can easily pause the video right there. And then I have the volume controls right here. So that's pretty much how you can use the remote and the Fire TV stick. Now you're also able to control your smart home right from the Amazon remote using your Amazon voice assistant. Show me the front door. And here I have a Ring Video Doorbell Pro that it can then just pull up right on the TV and I can view it. I can then talk through the camera by holding down the voice button, which is pretty cool. I can then control my smart lights and everything else that you would use your Amazon Assistant for right here on the remote, which is pretty neat. Now, one last really cool feature is, let's say you don't have your remote close by or maybe you lost it and you wanna still control certain things on your Fire TV stick, you can actually link your Fire TV stick with an Echo device. So I have an Echo Dot right here that we can link together to control. Let's see if it will work right now. Play on Fire TV stick. I couldn't find a device or group named Brett's Fire TV stick in Brett's profile. So that didn't work. Let me show you how to fix that. Next, we're going to head into the Amazon Voice Assistant application. And then we're gonna go under the More tab down here at the bottom right. And then we're going to select Settings. Now, there are a lot of settings under here. 
but we're going to scroll through and find TV and video option right here. And the very first option under this is Fire TV. So we're gonna tap on Fire TV, and now we're going to select Link Your Alexa Device. So here it's showing the different devices that I have that are Fire TVs. So I'm gonna choose Brett's Fire TV Stick, connect, and then I'm going to link it with a certain Echo device. So here I have my Brett's Echo Dot 3. I'm gonna tap on that, link device, and now it's going to link them together. Now is what that does is it allows you to control with a voice your Fire TV stick with your Echo device. So we're gonna move the phone out of the way and show you how that works. So without touching anything else, Alexa. play. It now played on the TV, which it didn't do before. Alexa. Pause. So it now recognizes when something is playing on the Fire TV stick and can be controlled with the Echo. Alexa. Open Plex on Fire TV stick. Getting it from Fire TV. So there it went to the Plex application. To download it, I will need to use the remote, but to get to this point, I didn't have to have the remote. Alexa. Open Disney Plus. Getting Disney Plus from Fire TV. Turn the volume down on the Fire TV. That was a bit hard to see, but it did adjust the volume on the TV without me touching anything on the remote. So it's really nice that you have this integration with the Echo device and the Fire TV stick. So if you already have one of those, it's a really cool thing to have. And now we can also ask it to play things completely by voice. Play Endgame on Fire TV. Getting Avengers. Endgame from Prime Video. And there it started the movie and continued off where I was. And if your TV supports it, you can say Alexa. Turn off the TV. And Alexa. Turn on the TV. That's pretty cool. Now another way to send videos from your phone to your Fire TV stick is through the casting option. So as how this works, let's say we go into Netflix here on my phone and I want to play something. First down here, you're gonna see this little uh, TV cast icon. So I'm gonna tap that and usually it shows just Chromecast devices, but it will also show Amazon devices. So here we have Brett's Fire TV stick. I'm gonna tap on that. There you can see my TV changed and it's opening Netflix. And then let's say I wanna watch the Smurfs here. I'm going to select play. And now it's going to play that movie right over on the TV without me having to touch the remote. So that's really nice if you're using your phone to browse to find something to watch. You find it, you can easily play it over there on the TV. Now that will also work with other applications like here under YouTube. I can tap that same cast icon. Here I have Brett's Fire TV stick. It's going to load up the YouTube application and then I could find something to watch and play it over there on the TV. So it's really cool that you have that integration as well with the Fire TV stick. And then here it's even given me an option to sign into the TV so that I have my account linked up. Alexa, go home. And one last trick, if you do hold down the home button, it's going to pop open this menu. So here you can see the time. Here we can then quickly jump into our applications. So it's gonna take us right to all of the apps. Let's go back here if we want to sleep. So send Amazon Fire TV Stick to sleep. To wake up, press select button on the remote. Here you have the option to turn on the mirroring easily without having to go into the settings. And then here you have the option to go into the settings. So that's just kind of something that's nice to know um, how to quickly get to some of those different options. And then we can just push the power button on the remote to turn off the TV. 
Hopefully this was helpful in getting your Fire TV stick set up so that you can use it to its full capacity. Now I may have missed a few features here or there, so if you have any further questions about anything I talked about today, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you and answer those or make follow-up videos on further features down the road. Now there is one more feature that I didn't talk about today where you can actually use your Fire TV stick as a home theater system with Echo devices that you have in your home. So if you wanna know how to do that, check the video out over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.